A few weeks ago, Figma unveiled UI3, a redesign of their design tool. As part of this, they showed off this new floating toolbar that has a really slick animation when switching between modes. Today, we're going to recreate this in Next.js using Framer Motion. You can grab the starter code in the description. With that, let's jump in. To start, I have a blank Next.js project. I've gone ahead and set up ShadCN using the CLI tool, and I've added the switch component here in this components folder. Let's start by creating the toolbar content. So I'm going to replace this starter code text. And first, let's create the surrounding div, which will be the toolbar itself. And inside this div, I'll give it styles of horizontal padding, some vertical padding, BG neutral of 50, rounded, medium, flex, gap 3, items center. Give it a box shadow medium and overflow hidden. OK, and now we can see the start of the toolbar here. So this toolbar container div is going to have three children. The first will be the list of icons. The second will be a divider line. And the third will be the switch. So let's first do the icon list. So I'll put that in another div. And for the icons, I'm going to pull them from Lucid React, which is already part of the project because it's a dependency for ShadCN. So I'm going to add a few icons from Lucid. OK, so here's just a few icons I picked out when I hit Save. We got the icons showing up here. We need to make this horizontal. So let's go into the div and add styles. So flex, let's put a gap of six and items center. Okay, so now that's laid out nicely horizontally. Next, let's do the divider separator line. So that will be another div. And we'll make it self closing. And this div will give it classes of width of 0.5, so very thin line, self stretch. Make sure it takes up the full height of the flex box. BG neutral of 200. Now we hit save. We can see the line. But we can see right now there's an issue because of the padding on the toolbar container. So to fix this, I'm just going to add a negative margin here to this line. So it'll go past and now reach the top and bottom of the container. Finally, let's add the switch. So I'm just going to pull in the switch component from our components folder. And just like that. We have the switch here. I can click it and we have the switch is working. Now let's actually have this toggle do something that has changed the list of icons that we show. So I'm going to go up and first I'm going to create a state variable to store which mode we're in. We'll call it is dev mode. Set is dev mode. And by default, it will be false. We need to import use state. And we also need to make this a client component because we're using use state. Now we need to conditionally render which set of icons we want. So I'm just going to go around this div and I'll say, if dev mode is true, then we want to return something else. We'll return something else. Now this will be the something else. So let me move it in here. Okay. And we need to also set the div to show if dev mode is true. So for now, I'll just copy the same thing. And let me just replace this list of icons. So slightly different list of icons. Let me just import these. So now we've got two different icons. If we click the switch. It doesn't do anything. That's because we need to connect this switch up to the state variable to toggle it. So we can do that pretty easily. You just need to go down to the switch component and it has a couple of properties which we'll use. So first is checked. So what is the state of the switch? And we'll tie this to the is dev mode variable. And we'll also use the on checked change. So when the toggle is selected, I will call set is dev mode. OK, let's try this. So here I'm going to click the switch and switch is the list of icons that we have. Now let's animate this toolbar when we do the switching of the mode. So first thing I'm going to add is a animation for these icon lists as they get switched. So I want them to slide up and slide down as they enter and exit. So let's go into these divs for the icon lists and let's first convert them into a motion div. Motion. Change the closing tag. And I'm going to add properties on this. So after the class names, I'll give it an initial of, for this one, y100, animate y0, exit y100. And for transition, I'll give it a type of spring with a bounce of 0. So let's just see how this works just on one of these. So now if I switch it, you can see the icon list comes in. The exit animation doesn't work yet. We'll get to that. But let's just add an animation to this other div as well. 
I'll also convert this to a motion div. I'll copy these animation properties to this other div as well. Well, I'm gonna switch it and make these negative 100 instead of positive 100, that I will switch the direction that these come in. So remember, negative 100 is above, positive 100 will be below. So when I refresh the page, this icon list comes in nicely from the top. When I toggle it, nothing happens. And this is because we need to add keys to each of these divs so that frame motion knows these are two different divs and not the same div. So I'll just add to this first one, a key of let's say dev toolbar. And for the second one, I'll give it a key of design toolbar. Now we got this intro animation. When I switch it, now we get the intro animations for both of them. But we don't have the exit animations turned on. And so for that, we need to surround this all in an animate presence. So animate presence from frame motion. So now let's try this again. If I switch it, okay, there's a bit of a weird morphing that's happening here. To fix the morphing, I'm going to add a mode of pop layout. So this will blend these two animations as they happen. So now when we switch it, it nicely blends. Now you'll notice there's this weird artifacting that's happening where we still see the icon list after it moves outside the container. To fix this and to fix honestly a lot of things with frame motion a lot of times, let's just go into container div and add a position relative. So now if we try this again and toggle it, now this is fixed. Final thing I'll do here is on animate presence, I'm gonna pass an initial of false. So this will make sure that initially on page load, we don't have this icon that's loading in, but we still preserve the animations as we toggle. Okay, so we have this animation for the icon list as they come in, but you'll notice the container jumps between these two sizes. So let's tie all this together and add layout animations to make this look a little bit more smooth overall. So I'm gonna go into the container div, I'm gonna convert this to be a motion div. Let's grab also the ending tag and update it. And I'm simply going to add the layout property on this div. And now with the magic of layout animations, when I try this again, it nicely animates the container. Now you'll notice there's some weird morphing that's happening and scaling on each of these elements. So if you pay attention, let's say to one of these icons, you'll notice as it comes in and comes out, it stretches and shrinks. The same thing actually is happening to the switch. If you watch the switch, there's a weird morphing and it turns out it's also happening to this divider as well. To fix this, we need to go into each of the children and give it a layout property as well. So we tell Framer Motion, hey, don't try to mess with the size of these individual children. So let's just go here into the icon list. So below the key, I'm just going to add layout. Same for this icon list as well. If I refresh, you notice if I try this again, the morphing on the icons themselves have stopped. So that's good. Now let's fix these other two children as well. So if we go down to the separator div, we need to make it a motion div and let's just add layout to it. And then for the switch, the easiest way to deal with this is just to surround it in a div make it a motion div, and then add layout on this. You'll notice that the switch is not fully centered now. So let's add class names, flex, and items center. So now it recenters the switch. So now if we try it one more time, click the switch, now there's no more morphing, and we still preserve the nice overall layout animations. So that's what we have for this video. Drop any questions you have in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And on screen now is another video for you to check out, and I'll see you in the next one.